Let's take a look at some bond portfolio management strategies. Now, what we're interested in knowing is how do different bond portfolios perform when interest rates change? And it turns out that it depends on how much rates change and how the yield curve shifts. So let's take a look at some, some different strategies. The first one we can look at is your basic, what's referred to as a bullet strategy. In this case, we concentrate the um, maturities right around the same point on the yield curve. So here we have a bunch of bonds and they're all, they all mature right around the 10 year mark. So they're concentrated like a bullet. The second strategy you can consider is something known as a barbell strategy. In this case, you have maturities at the extreme ends of the maturity. So here at five years and 10 years, and we call it a barbell strategy. If you, you know, drew a line through there, it would look like a barbell with the weights on the sides. And the third strategy that can be considered is a ladder strategy, where you have equal amounts of securities at each maturity. And you commonly hear this uh, mentioned by financial planners for individuals who have certificates of deposit. Now you don't want all of your CDs to mature the same year because rates might be high, rates might be low. So you tend to have maturity or uh, CDs that will mature in different time periods because if you're retired, you may need the money. So you'd like one to mature or if you want to roll it over into another CD, the rates will be different. And then next year you'll have another one coming due, et cetera, et cetera. So let's take a look at an example here. And this example comes from Fabozzi's uh, Bond Markets Analysis and Strategy. And here there are three different bonds, A, B, and C. A has a 8.5% coupon, matures in five years. Um, the price plus accrued interest is 100. So it's selling for its maturity value. So its yield to maturity equals its coupon rate. And that's true for all of these bonds, B and C as well. And the duration, the dollar duration and the dollar convexity have already been computed here. Okay, bond B has a 9.5% coupon and matures in 20 years. Um, and bond C has a 9.25% coupon and matures in 10 years. So the bullet strategy would be to buy bond C and the barbell strategy is to buy bonds A and B and Fabozzi worked out that if you put 50.2 percent in bond A and 49.8 percent in bond B it'll turn out that you'll have the same dollar duration as the bullet strategy so let's take a look at that. How do you calculate those? Well, dollar duration is just going to be a weighted average of the dollar duration of the two bonds. So bond A had a dollar duration of 4.005. Uh, bond B had a dollar duration of 8.882. So you get a dollar duration of 6.434. So they have the same dollar duration. I've actually summarized it here the yield on the two portfolios is going to be different. Bond C, you're just buying the bond, so it has a yield of 9.25%. The yield on the barbell strategy is just going to be a weighted average. It's 8.998%, so just fractionally less than 9%. And you can see that the dollar convexity, again, is just a weighted average of the dollar convexity of A and B, and it's 71.7846. So we have this summary table here. The bullet strategy has a yield of nine and a quarter percent, dollar duration of 6.434, and dollar convexity of 55.4506. The barbell strategy has a lower yield to maturity, same dollar duration, but a higher convexity. And if you if you know anything about convexity or if you watched my previous videos on convexity 
Convexity is a good thing because when interest rates go up, the price of the bond goes down at a slower rate, and when interest rates go down, the price of the bond goes up at a faster rate than if it were a straight line, if it were not convex. So convexity is a good thing, but you'll notice that there's a cost, there's a price to pay for convexity. In order to produce a portfolio that has more convexity, you have to settle for a lower yield. So that's the cost of convexity. So our question is, what happens to the relative performance between the bullet and barbell strategies when interest rates change? And that's actually going to depend on how the rates change. And here are some of the different ways that rates can change. We can have a parallel shift in the yield curve. That is that rates change by the same amount at each different maturity. So perhaps they go up by 50 basis points, but they go up by 50 basis points everywhere, or they go down by 50 basis points everywhere. We can have the case where there's steepening of the yield curve. So here, this dashed line here, it's getting steeper. It's going up and getting steeper. That is that interest rates for the longer maturity bonds have gone up more than the interest rates for the shorter maturity bonds. Okay. Similarly, with we can have a falling rate but the rate falls more for the short-term bonds than it does for the long-term bonds. So the yield curve gets steeper. We can have a flattening of the yield curve. This is a case up here where the interest rates rise, but they rise more for the short-term bonds than for the long-term bonds. So you can see that this is getting to be a flatter yield curve. Or they can go down, in this case, the rates go down more for the long-term bonds than for the short-term bonds. And again, the yield curve flattens. Now again, I've taken this example from Fabozzi's book, and he worked out what happens here. And in this, this column here, I have different yield changes, and these are the yield changes for bond C, for the bullet strategy. Okay and it continues over here. So you can see that for a parallel shift, I've actually highlighted it here, this is going to be what's in this column here is the bullet total return minus the barbell total return. So a positive number means the bullet strategy beats the barbell strategy. And a negative return means the barbell strategy beats the bullet strategy. Now for a parallel shift, we can see that the um, bullet strategy is better if interest rates don't change very much. Okay, They don't change very much. If they go down by less than 100 basis points or up by less than 125 basis points, the bullet strategy is better. If the interest rates change more than that, you're better off with the barbell strategy. Now think about it, that makes sense because as we said before, convexity is good because when interest rates change, change by a lot, the convexity causes the barbell's total return to go up more if the, if the interest rates are going down because the price of the bond will go up faster or the reverse is also true. If interest rates are going up, then the yield will go down, or the price will go down slower because of this convexity. All right? But because there's a price of convexity, a lower yield, if interest rates don't change much at all, you're better off with the bullet strategy. It turns out that in this case, and this example is for a six-month investment horizon that if the yield curve flattens and you have this non-parallel shift and the case here for the flattening is where uh, A changes by the amount of C so about this amount plus 25 basis points 
and bond B changes by the amount of C minus 25 basis points. So it's a flattening of the yield curve. Turns out in this case that the barbell strategy is the best strategy no matter how much interest rates change. And then in the final case, if it's a steepening yield curve, and this is the opposite case, so in this case A is going to change by the amount of C minus 25 basis points, and B is going to change by the amount of uh, C plus 25 basis points, and I've highlighted it here, you can see that the bar, um, I'm sorry, the bullet strategy is best if interest rates don't fall by more than 325 basis points, nor rise by more than 250 basis points. But if they change by more than that, then the barbell strategy is better. All right, so let's um, think about this, or I've summarized this here. For a parallel shift in the yield curve, the uh, bullet portfolio outperforms the barbell portfolio when, yield on, when the yield on C falls by less than 100 basis points or rises by less than 125 basis points. And, you know, I argued that because there's a cost of convexity, unless interest rates change a lot, you don't benefit from all that convexity. You're better off having bond C that has the higher yield. For the non-parallel flattening of the yield curve, the barbell outperforms the bullet for any yield change in this example. And then for a non-parallel steepening of the yield curve, the bullet portfolio outperforms the barbell as long as the yield on C doesn't rise by more than 250 basis points or fall by more than 325 basis points. What's the key point here? The key point actually is, is that duration and convexity tell us little about performance over some investment horizon. Okay? It depends on how the yield curve shifts. This happened to be a six month time horizon. If we did it for a one year time horizon or a two year time horizon, the results would be different. So we can't draw any general conclusion where we can say that um, convexity, you know, using the barbell strategy is always better in this example or always worse in this case. Okay, it depends on the situation. But you can see that you can construct a portfolio that has, you can construct two portfolios that have the same duration, dollar duration, but have different levels of convexity and they're going to per perform differently um, under different interest rate conditions.